We're back here at the National Firearms Museum here at NRA headquarters. I'm with Doug Wickham, the senior curator of the National Firearms Museum. Doug, an interesting revolver you have for us today for Curator's Corner. I'm looking at it, but I can't tell you what it is. So why don't you tell us what we have here, sir? We have a lot of fun choosing these guns for Curator's Corner, as you might imagine. Each time, you know, it's a challenge. Who can pick the strangest? <laughs> I think the Walsh revolver that I have here is a pretty good contender. Contender for strange? This one is strange. It's got a spur trigger, but if you look carefully, it has two hammers. Oh, Why would okay. it need two hammers? Well, you'd think for its size, this might be a, a five or six shot. This is actually a 10 shot revolver. Wow. So superimposed charge in that uh, long cylinder, you basically have one powder charge, one um, bullet, and then stacked again. The idea was is that you would cock both hammers yes. at the same time. Pulling on that trigger would discharge the right hammer to go down forward. Got it. Striking one of the percussion cones. Then you pull it again and the left hammer goes down, hits the percussion cone right next door to it. Now, hopefully they're not both going to go off at the same time. I hope not. Because you've got two charges trying to make their way out of the cylinder and down that barrel. Excellent design. It, okay, you're, it is an excellent. I was going to say, I've seen some incredible designs, some interesting innovations, but to me, I'll be honest, it does not strike me as a practical design. But, oh, it, you're, but you're much more the expert. Well, th think about a 10 shot gun in this space, the size of a 5 That's shot. That's true. Now, you'd think if it was a poor design, you wouldn't get good investors to sign on to support this. One of the folks that did the New Haven Arms Company, a oh. gentleman by the name of Oliver Winchester was one of the major stockholders. Okay. They made about 3,000 of these guns. A lot were sold in 1861, 1862. Soldiers that were going off to the war between the states, they wanted to have something that would give them an advantage. Mm -hmm. A 10 shot gun over a five shot, six shot, yeah. definitely this was it. How well was it received? Was it popular? There was an entire company of the 9th Michigan, Company I, decided they were going to outfit themselves. So a hundred guys went out, they each bought one of these revolvers. That's a pretty good endorsement. Yeah. And uh, it's a 31 caliber, which is you know perfect if you need to uh, you know perhaps harvest a rabbit for the cooking pot. I wouldn't really want to rely upon something like that for personal protection, but in those days, yeah. who knows? It was something that uh, gave you a you know, perhaps a, a sense of personal protection. So it's historically, how did it perform? Well, that's just it, is that the uh, annals of the uh, Civil War are somewhat silent. There's a couple of, uh, couple of reports where this was highly sought after. There was also another one where a gentleman was assigned to take care of a pig for the uh, company cook pot. And he discharged several shots and could not uh, dispatch said porker. So perhaps not the best design, perhaps it failed in its execution, <laughs> but where else can you see such an incredible historic piece but in the National Firearms Museum? The Walsh Revolver, very nice. So how can folks see these guns in person, Doug, or online? Well, if you want to uh, do it without leaving home, just go to www.nramuseums.com, but we hope that you'll come here to Fairfax, Virginia, to the NRA headquarters right off of Waples Mill Road, Come by and see the NRA National Firearms Museum where history awaits. And the double hammered Walsh revolver awaits your inspection. Awesome. Love it, Doug. Thank you so much for your great selections here for Curator's Corner. We'll be back with more Curator's Corner from right here at NRA National Firearms Museum. <laughs>